Hey guys, it's Bro you at and it finally happened! Malga is getting nerfed! Oh, we've been waiting for this, or at least I've been waiting for this day for literally weeks now. And Magua's not the only hero getting changed. There's also a good amount of other heroes that are also getting changed that we're gonna cover in this video and discuss in length. But keeping it a stack here, Magua did receive most of the changes in this update because he really needed to. So let's look at the Magua changes and look at the rest of the heroes. So the first change that Magua did receive is actually gonna be a buff and a nerf, but it's mainly gonna be a nerf because they're gonna be increasing his base health from 200 250 to 300, but they're gonna be decreasing the base armor from 250 to 200. So while he technically does have the same amount of hit points at 500, the fact that he has 50 less armor means that he's not gonna be so beefy because if you know anything about armor, is that it reduces incoming damage more so than just regular base health. But other than the base health increase, the rest of the changes are all gonna be nerfs, most importantly to his chain guns because the ammo is gonna be decreasing from 350 total ammo to now 300. 100 total ammo. His cardiac overdrive got two nerfs where his life steal decreased from 70% to now 60% and the cooldown to the actual ability increased from 10 seconds to 12 seconds. So a two second cooldown increase. But in my opinion, what I think is going to be the biggest nerf is to his cage fight ultimate because it no longer grants Magua infinite ammo when you're in the cage. Now you actually have to reload your 300 bullet clip. And Malga's final nerf is to his berserker passive ability where you do critical damage to an enemy, whether it's with headshots or an on fire target. Now the over health conversion rate decreased from 60% to 50%. And those are all of the nerfs that Magua is getting with the mid season patch, which in case I didn't already specify, it is coming out like right now, today. By the time you're watching this video, the mid season patch is already out. And before I talk about the rest of the heroes, we're really gonna talk about Magua because I know there's like about six Magua mains out there that are probably so devastated because no, I found the thing that I love finally and now they're nerfing him. Yeah. Yeah, they needed to nerf him. <laughs> it's no secret that Magua was the best tank in all of Overwatch 2. While he's definitely easier to counter compared to other meta tanks in the past, like Orisa, for an example, even when you do counter him, like when you anti him, if they had a Kariko that could cleanse the anti, he wasn't gonna die because he had so much sustainability. But then on top, and this is where a big problem is, you can have sustainability as a tank, but if you have a lot of DPS potential, then that just means you're unbalanced. It's sort of like if a Roadhog was able to self-heal and do damage at the exact same time. It's just way too much of a selfish tank like Magua to be able to have. Uh, you have too much sustainability with the passive ability being able to light the enemy on fire and then get critical damage, heal yourself with the over health, but then on top of that, have life steal. And then if you cage fight, it just meant it was a recipe for disaster. Uh, Magua was not gonna die. And now there's a lot more windows of opportunity to kill Magua, whether it's the increase in the cooldown or the cage fight, having to reload and there's the, your opportunity to kill him. It's just a more fair and balanced matchup to Magua. But does that mean that Magua is now going to be the worst tank in Overwatch 2? I definitely think he's not going to be the S tier hero. I, that might even go to Orisa now. Uh, he definitely won't be the worst tank because well, he can do a lot as a tank still. It's just not as frequent as it once was. But speaking of Orisa, she's the only tank that's getting buffed which is weird because Reinhardt is right there. But anyway, I guess they're wanting to remove the fall off damage from her primary fire. Okay. And they're also gonna be removing Orisa receiving force critical damage whenever she fortifies. Now, what force critical damage means is in the case of Magua specifically, whenever Magua lights Orisa on fire and then he shoots him with the cha-cha gun, that means that he's gonna get critical damage even if he's not shooting her in the head. But if she fortifies, no longer is that critical damage gonna be received on Orisa's end. So while Orisa's fortify buff is really only applied to Magua, the fall off damage penalty is gonna be huge huge when it comes to Rissa because while well, Rissa was already somewhat decent but now she's gonna be better because she, well she has no fall off damage and Roadhog's gonna be the last tank getting changed in this mid-season patch and thank god because they're nerfing his take a breather ability previously you were able to heal for a maximum of 500 health but now it's only gonna be 450 and there's gonna be a cooldown increase in between usage with the take a breather ability previously it was one second now it's 1.5 seconds see I like this nerf because well they're trying to make Roadhog good 
like, if they continue to nerf Roadhog, he's gonna be the worst tank eventually. He, he just will. But at least he has a place to still be the selfish tank that he always is. It's just less effective. Just like with Magua, it's just gonna be less effective. I don't think a lot of Roadhog mains will feel the nerf because if you're really needing that extra 50 health from Take a Breather, my boy, my boy, you are feeding too much already. But now we're on to the DPS heroes that are getting changed in the mid-season patch where there's only gonna be two DPS heroes. It's kind of surprising, but it's gonna be Sojourn and Sombra. And the buff to Sojourn, I'm gonna be honest, it's relatively minimal because the gradual energy decay on her railgun is no longer gonna happen whenever your energy is below 25%. If you manage to charge your railgun up to say like 50%, it's gonna start decaying, but it's only gonna decay to 25%. And while it might seem minimal on paper, I think this is gonna be a massive buff to Sojourn because this just gives you more opportunities to get back up to the 100% railgun, and that's what makes Sojourn effective. It's not really the primary fire, even though it's great, it's the railgun. It's the one-shot headshots and squishy heroes that make her an effective hero. And now you get more opportunities to get there. Sombra's up next, and I'm gonna be honest, I have no idea what this hack change means. I've been making videos for seven years covering hero changes, and this is the first time that this makes zero sense. But here's what this says. Server update rate while channeling increase to improve responsiveness. Some remains you get to decrypt that, but the other thing that's getting changed that I do know what it means is to her stealth because the grace period, whatever you cancel, the stealth now is getting increased from 0.5 seconds to 0.75 seconds. Whenever you're capturing a point with Sombra, the cooldown to her stealth is now going to be paused at one second if you're capturing, or if you're contesting the objective, is going to be paused at 1.5 seconds, and the cooldown on respawning got decreased from 1.5 seconds to one second. And some some remains might not like these changes because they might not like the fact that they're kind of forced to not be invisible if they just so happen to be on the objective but some might i don't know some raids let me know what you think about these changes and finally let's look at all the support heroes that are getting changed where there's only going to be three and one of them you're just going to laugh at specifically the auto nerf because they're going to be reducing the effectiveness to a brighter grenade from 3.5 seconds to now th three seconds it's a half a second nerf to the effectiveness of anti-grenade and the heal grenade Grenade. And I'm laughing because people want Ana to be nerfed, which is kind of surprising, but this is not going to satisfy those people's wants and desires. Ilyoyo, on the other hand, is actually getting some effective changes because now whenever you use your secondary heal or you use your ultimate, the charge from a primary fire is no longer going to be paused when charging. On top of that, they're increasing the ammo clip from 14 bullets to now 16 bullets. But the final change is going to be to her Captive Sun ultimate ability because beforehand, if you use all your heal beam and then you ult well, nothing would happen. But in the mid-season patch, when you ult, it'll fully replenish your heal beam. Whenever Starstruck explodes, there's no longer gonna be damage falloff from that explosion. And the final support hero and the final hero that's getting changed in the mid-season patch is Life Weaver, where they're gonna be increasing the Thorn Follow projectile speed from 70 meters per second to now 80 meters per second. So you now fire a little bit, not fire a little bit faster, but they just travel a little bit faster. But on top of that, the pedal platform is no longer gonna be pierced by piercing projectiles. And those are all the hero changes and Magua nerfs that came with the mid-season 8 patch. But if you want to see these changes in action, or if you want to watch me play May Hero Mastery, I'm going to be live on my Twitch. The link will be in the description below, so be sure to check that out because when you're watching the video, I'm going to be live. But until then, I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching more. Watch two videos to come, and bye.